We're here in the heart of Silicon Valley, in Sunnyvale. Why, Ulla? Why have you come all this way to talk to me about we're, software? Where we're here at the uh, tech center in Sunnyvale for Mercedes-Benz that we have had now for more than 25 years. So we have always been here in the valley working with right. innovative tech partners. And we thought it was a fitting place to actually describe what the future of software and the corresponding hardware look like uh, in Mercedes. We have a lot of ground to cover, but I want to start by asking you, how high does software rank as a priority for Mercedes and all of the things you're trying to, to achieve broadly in electrification, but also in autonomous driving? Software is absolutely a core competence for the uh, car of the future. So we have been building up our software competence uh, gradually over the last years. Uh, but this is a space that is so broad that even if you make yourself the architect of your own operating system, you don't have to do everything yourself. You need partnering as well. Well, let's jump into that. So you have announced a, a deeper relationship with Google and it's a license agreement. You pay Google for help in building out your operating system. Why did you do that instead of taking advantage of open sourced software or just doing it yourself? Uh, the core of the relationship with Google, this strategic partnership that we have formed, is our joint vision of taking technology to the next level. Everybody knows Google Maps, Google Navigation, and of course YouTube on the entertainment side, uh, where we said, what do our customers want? It's all about delivering a superior customer experience. So we sat down with the Google team and said, what can we do together? How can we make navigation in the car go to the next level? And uh, that sparked uh, a deeper conversation, and here we are announcing a partnership today. Marcus Schaefer, your CTO, set out the ultimate goal, which is to have no screen mirroring, no need to plug in the phone. The operating system is all you ever need. But you, you can't get away from the fact that Google through Android Auto or Apple through CarPlay, they are making their own moves into this market. How do you reconcile that, Google's own ambitions with your partnership to, and, and your kind of want to take control of the software architecture? If you take a look at the Mercedes now, what it's going to be in the future, first of all, you have this uh, mind boggling uh, uh, wide screen in the car, and uh, you can present anything and everything on that screen. And this is where we shouldn't make the um, uh, mistake of just looking at infotainment alone, but think about uh, across domains. Infotainment interacting with the assistance system and automated driving. So you can marry navigation with driving assistance and automated uh, driving and create whole new use cases. And only a vehicle manufacturer is in the position to integrate all the different pieces of the vehicle down to you know, uh, immersive experiences, music uh, and entertainment, where you even use the climate control, the scent in the car, uh, uh, the subwoofers in the seat to create 4D sound. All of those things uh, make it a compelling argument to go for an integrated approach. But we don't have an antagonistic relationship with any one of these tech players. Uh, we work with them to take their valuable assets, digital assets, and put it into our system. Uh, so this is really a win-win. As part of that software strategy, are you actively hiring? You know, Google is one example of many names in Silicon Valley that have done layoffs recently. There is a lot of software engineering talent on the market at the moment. We are actively hiring. And whereas we work with software for many, many years, these last three or four or five years have really been a paradigm shift for us where we're going for partial vertical integration. And we set out the target a few years ago to add another 3,000 software engineers to the Mercedes team. And we have uh, almost accomplished that already. But if, uh, if, if we find the right talent in the market that uh, supplements our team, yes, we are hiring. How much of a competitive moat do you feel Mercedes has in the theater of software? Do you think that you are actually going to be able to do this on your own two feet? Uh, absolutely. As an architect of the operating system, yes, uh, we, have, we have laid out uh, what the whole system is uh, uh, supposed to do and is going to be capable of doing. But when you build a software house, you don't have to lay every single brick yourself or put up every single tile in, in the bathroom. And that's why you leverage tech partnerships. You got to be in control as the architect, but leverage tech partnerships and make sure that you work with the best 
to deliver the ultimate customer experience. Self-driving was another part of today. Thank you for the ride this morning. I went out and took a level three ride using DrivePilot on the freeway. It was limited to a certain extent. What caught my ear during the presentations was 50% of net sales for autonomous software will go to your partner NVIDIA. Talk me through that relationship and why you went that route to develop the compute. Uh, we are the first manufacturer that have certified a level three system that you drove today. So actually true autonomy in this case on the highway in heavy traffic. So now uh, we're taking the first few steps here for uh, individual mobility where really uh, the car is going to give you back the most valuable gift of all, uh, time. In the relationship with NVIDIA that we formed about three years ago, uh, both parties said here, okay, listen, let's take this to the next level. But let's find another business model where both parties invest into the partnership, yes. but also in an intelligent and equitable way can reap benefits from the partnership. So this is a combined risk and reward partnership that we think uh, not only technologically, but economically is gonna work really well for both parties. And you know, it's available in Nevada at the moment, you have a permit, you're awaiting California. You talk about this goal of, of a billion euros of EBIT by I think mid-decade, mid generated in part from autonomous software. How big is the market here in the United States for that? Or is this largely going to be driven out of Europe? No, the United States is going to be an important market for us, and it's a growing market. So it's about increasing the envelope and providing more and more use cases in the automated drive space, all the way up then to uh, autonomous drive, level three drive, uh, on the highway, on the interstate. And in fact, uh, the system that we're working on for the next generation, we want to take that well above 100 kilometers an hour, and then it starts becoming really, really relevant if you're going on a longer trip. And do we believe that we can monetize that? Absolutely. Tesla has a very clear approach of how they package full self-driving and autopilot. They've had their own news today, of course. How do you decide Mercedes, what you charge for and what you don't charge for. You put a lot of emphasis throughout the whole day on the customer experience, this having to be what the customer wants. But ultimately, if you draw up the list, it's a long list of things that you pay for on top of your car. The good thing with MBOS is that the whole car, every single aspect of the car in terms of its electric electronic architecture, its digital backbone will be over the air reachable. So we can make your car uh, actually become better with time. It's, it doesn't age, it actually gets more functionality over time. Some of the functions, they're gonna be base functions which is just embedded in the basic price of the vehicle, but much of the additional stuff, and especially in the automated driving space, we feel are so attractive right. that they can be monetized.